We're here to answer your game, gaming, or game night questions. All right, at the top of the show, there are a few things going on right now that means we didn't have that much time on our hand last week and not enough time to really prep for this week's episode. One of the things going on, of course, is Sean's birthday. So happy birthday again, Sean. I mentioned it earlier, but Farrell will squeeze it in here as well. Well, thanks, Mo, and to uh, the lobbyists and, and folks on Twitter who have been uh, passing on gra- congratulations as well. I'm not much for parties, but the kids and I did have a great sushi dinner, and that's really all I need. Yeah, I got to admit, that, that that looked like good takeout sushi. That looked like really good takeout sushi. So what we decide to do tonight to make things easy for us is to host an AMA or ask us anything, uh, ask uh, questions, Q&A, a live Q&A here on Twitch. Uh, where people in our chat room, the lobby, can ask us questions live. Now, along with this, just in case the lobby isn't very forthcoming, uh, to be honest, we really didn't give anyone a heads up we were going to do this. Normally, if we have an AMA coming, we like to announce it for a couple weeks leading up to it. So totally fair if the lobby's unprepared for this. Um, I do have some shorter, easier to answer questions that we receive that aren't enough for a big full podcast episode, right? Sometimes people send in these questions at questions at tabletopbellhop.com that are just too quick to answer. Like, I can't drag them out long enough to make a full episode so i got a couple of those saved up that uh, we may get to if we don't get enough interaction from the lobby all right well to give the lobbyists a bit of time to think how about we start with one of those okay so uncle rico at bear underscore down 23 asks tabletop bellhop do you have any favorite roll and write games all right i i have had this one on the list for a while and you know what I want it to be a full blog post. I want this to be a full topic. It should be a full topic. What are the best roll and write games? It's a fantastic, it's something I've Googled. I, I, it's something people would look for. There is one huge problem. I would just be stealing other people's work. I have not played enough roll and writes. And like, like I don't, there's tons of them. People, they, they blew up. Wolfgang Warsh is the biggest designer who put out Ganshan Clever, or Just So Clever, was such a huge hit. Stronghold Games liked it so much that they bought his entire game license and put out something like eight games by Wolfgang Warsh. There's, I, I don't even know all the names. There's just tons of them. And then there's the, the other random write games, which I think get lumped into this, right? The flip and writes and the, the, the I, you got roll and write, flip and write, but whatever other method of making people write things down and like i have played so few of these it's just not something i dove into i will admit part of this is the fact that stronghold games did want to work with us um never has in the past and, and weren't interested they 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 only give out their games to what they call ambassadors and they only do that in the states so that is a part of it so shame on stronghold with not working with awesome people like us but i just haven't played enough of them now, that said, I do have some favorites of the ones I played. So we'll answer this. But like I said, I, I couldn't do, like, we couldn't do a top 10. I don't even think I could do a top five. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to think about it. I got three off the top of my head, and maybe there's more. So the number one roll and write I have ever played, and I got to admit, I still dig this game a lot, is an older Euro game, of all things, published by Aaliyah. It's part of the Aaliyah Small Box games, and it's called St. Malo. And it is a pirate themed roll and write that uses dry erase markers on a board and you're rolling dice and you are building a fort. So think days of pirates and you're, the pirates are raiding, you're building cannons and you're also um, turning your city into different districts and working on the walls on the outside. And you're going to compare your number of pi- uh, cannons to the pirates. And it's a very thinky, rather heavy game. And that's what I liked about it. Because one of the things I, I wouldn't say all roll and rights are famous for, but especially back when this game came out, most roll and rights, there was Uno or not Uno, Yahtzee. And there were games based on it, right? They were pretty simple. When St. Malo wrote, it was like, wow. This showed me that roll and rights can actually be quite heavy and quite good. And I really liked it. Like that's, that's another, we probably have to add to the Sean try it list. <laughs> Cause like, and the other thing, I don't see anyone talking about this. So I don't know if maybe it's longer to print. Some of those older Aaliyah games are, uh, was published by Rio Grande. I think I'm not positive on that. Maybe hard to get nowadays. So that's my number one is, is St. Mallow. My number two is through the ages but it's the the roll and write version called roll through the ages 
and specifically uh, the original game was called the bronze age but there was an expansion called the late bronze age so it's roll through the ages with the late bronze age expansion which is literally a print and play it's just a different score sheet you use while playing and this is a big chunky wooden game that reminds me of cribbage in a way because you roll the dice and then you use pegs in a wooden board to mark what resources you got and then you're going to use those resources to improve your city and build monuments and then at the end of the game once all the rolls are done you're going to get a total score and this gave you the feel of Through the Ages or a civilization style game, but in a roller and rig. And the production's top notch. Like it had these thick wooden dice. It was really well made, really impressive looking game and played really well. Now, I know they did put out a later game. I never tried the new one. Like it was a standalone game instead of just, um, it, was, it wasn't just an expansion. It was a follow-up. It might be the, the Steel Age or something. I'm not even sure anymore. The last one, for me, it's, I think, Railroad Inc. Again, I haven't played many of these. Um, my friend Scott is the one that introduced me to it. And what I loved in that is you didn't roll your own dice. You rolled all the dice into the center of the table. Then everyone had to do something with those dice. That was the first time I'd seen that mechanic. And I ends up, I love that mechanic. I like it in Tiny Towns. I like it in Number Nine. Um, I liked it. There was a garden game of flowers, might be even called Flower Garden, that used it. I love that everyone's working from the same pool. And what fascinated me is that by the end of the game, how everyone's thing is different. I love that it was just, we all started from the same base and we're all using the same dice. But if I show you my city and Sean shows you a city, they'll look completely different. And I love that aspect of it. Now, I'll admit, I never bought Roll Through the Ages because I had a feeling it would get tired quickly. Like, it was fun the first few games I played. Uh, I think I played it probably five times. But it just seems like it would get repetitive after a while. I didn't test that because, again, I didn't buy it. What looked like it would make it more interesting is the various different colors, right? So there was the blue set and there was the red set, and they gave you a couple special dice to keep things interesting. And I do have to admit, I didn't get to try those. It wasn't my copy of the game we played. And again, as something I mentioned at the start of the show and um, the audio that our patrons will get, I often am playing games with a new player. And so we never get to the expansion. Con, and that's what happens. I taught us the game. And it was great. And I tried it. And we played like a number of games in a row. And then the next time I saw Scott, we played it again, but there was a new player. And then the next time Scott broke it out again, there was a new player. So he always just stuck to the basic rules. And he had both sets. So that railroad. Yeah, this yes. was railroad ink we were talking about. Um, yeah. And apparently uh, Ravensburger still has St. Malo listed on their site, not available online, but available in stores for $36.99 MSRP. Okay, um, so so it's Ravensburger, Ravensburger. Not, not it is still Aaliyah. I know that I got that part right. Yeah. I couldn't remember who published it in North America. Yeah, so it's a Ravensburger game that you can still buy. I like it. Like it's just it's heavy. It's a euro. Like it, it's the euro with a roll and write mechanic, and I dig that. Yep. And I, you now, know, have I've you played, played any? I played Railroad Inc. as well. Uh, again, not with the advanced uh, thing. I've only played the basic, and it was enjoyable. It was absolutely enjoyable. Again, that that shared pool is of yeah. dice is a nice. Um, a nice option. Um, it's just, it, it's something I just haven't gotten a lot into. And it's probably one of the few I've played is, is that, uh, well, what about, um, the one you guys did a preview for on Kickstarter with the museum that had the, for lasers? the strange theme that didn't really fit. I like the game, but I hated the theme, right? Like I, it, it just, it had like art on there that made no sense. Like it just was illogical, but the actual mechanics were a lot of fun with the different mirrors and the laser right. that was roll for lasers, uh, which I think funded. I, to be honest, I don't know if I followed up after <laughs> doing our review. Roll for lasers was all right. I, I don't know if I consider it. Like, I think the other three are better. Um, roll for lasers though was surprisingly thinky once you got around the board a couple of yeah. times. It was no, neat absolutely. enough. And I never, due to um, COVID, never got to try it with more than two people. Right. So that was one of the other things. I really wanted to try that with with more players. And honestly, like I almost want to throw their board out and make my own on a sheet of graph paper. Yeah. Uh, now, if as a follow-up to this, Jeff in the chat yeah. room asked. What is the appeal of a roll and write? I like board games because of the bits. I I don't know. I, I think some portability, um, usually easier to teach, easier to play. So they're quick. They're good filler games. Um, if portability is a big thing, right? Like none of these games that I've seen are huge, right? Like even St. Malo and Euro, it's uh, the Aaliyah small box games. It's the smallest board game box they make. 
it's the same size as uh, for sale and two by two and i'm drawing my blank on some of the other well-known small box Aaliyah games i think that's a big part um people like dice they're the People like the feel and rolling dice and the, the the push your luck element of hoping you get that thing you need. That is a huge part. People who like output randomness, right? Well, actually, this is input randomness. Sorry, you're going to roll and then decide what to do with the dice. But there is that random element of, oh, I just need, especially like St. Mallow. I'm like, oh, I'm one cannon away from defending against the pirates. Do I get the cannon? Oh, I didn't. Okay, well, if I can't get the cannon, what can I do to mitigate the points I'm about to lose? Right, it's, it's that feeling. And portability really is, I mean, you know, again, we'll go back to Yahtzee, which is kind of like the first, the, the first mega popular reel. Mm. Right? And really, you need a pencil, paper, and five dice, right? You don't yeah. need one of their fancy score sheets. Pretty much everyone knows all the scoring for, uh, for Yahtzee. Uh, so you don't need any special components. You just need dice. Um, and and that's, that goes a long way, and especially, you know, if you're stuck in a cottage somewhere with the kids mm-hmm. and you just want to play a game... There's probably some dice lying around, especially if you're a role player. <laughs> so, <laughs> yep. uh, you know, there's plenty of, of things you can play. But also, I mean, it's also just really easy to make up a new roll and write game. Well, you yeah. know? Again, if you're bored, you're stuck in on a rainy day and you've got some dice around, dice, a pencil and some paper, you can make up a game and put it on Itch.io and, and sell it to people. Yeah. Uh, and that's that's kind of the, the uh, convenience and the thrill of roll and rights and why there are so very many roll and rights uh, of varying qualities is because anyone can write them and i think that's awesome it lets everyone dip their toe into the game uh, market and it, uh, worth noting i think at this point is the three i mentioned do not use standard d6s they're all dice made specific for those games but there are a ton that just use like that that not so clever if i remember correctly it's just standard d6 dice although to be fair i mean with a crib sheet or yes, the roll, uh, like railroad ink doesn't need special dice. You just have to write down on your sheet beforehand. One is a left turn. Yeah. Two is a right turn or, or whatever. Totally fair. So, you know, they're, they're D6s. They just decided to make their own custom uh, si- symbols on them rather than make you figure it out. Yeah. So this is an AMA. And now I'm tempted to go on my board game geek list and look at my games <laughs> played and my ratings to see if I'm missing any. I probably am. I just know I haven't played any of the World Game Wars ones. Like, those are big. There was one, uh, I think it's called Fitz or something. It was Tetris-based. That one looked really cool. That was, again, Stronghold Games that put that out. But again, I haven't played it. Like, I just, I, I almost feel like it's a gap in my gaming experience. But it's the kind of thing that, I, like, friends of mine got into. But, again, we're not gathering in public. So, so maybe... Um, Maybe Scott has gone out to get more on rights, and once we can get back together, I'll have played enough that I could actually do a full episode about it. So yeah, I wanted to cover that here because I'm like, at this point, we're never going to get to it on the full show because like I, I would just be Googling other people's top 10 roll and write games and refeeding the information, maybe doing a chart to figure out numbers and then telling you how great these games are I haven't played. And I don't like to do that. <laughs> Our entire thing would be three games and then 20 honorable mentions. Yeah. <laughs> so that's why we skipped that one. So Ryan asked, uh, Sean, what is the best, worst, most interesting birthday board game memories? Now, to be honest, uh, I come from a very different sort of background than Moe's, so I don't have as many. But honestly, I go way, way back, and some of my favorite are actually playing IQ 2000 back in the day. Um, That was just a fantastic um, youth oriented tr- version of Trivial Pursuit. Mm-hmm. It was a little bit more gamified, uh, and it, it wasn't as general knowledge. Like, you didn't have to be reading the New York Times on a regular basis to be able to answer these questions, uh, because kids weren't. Uh, but it really delved deeply into the sciences and things as well that, that interested me at the time. Um, and so, yeah, IQ 2000 was, was one that, uh, interesting. We played often as, uh, back in the birthday. Um, I don't think I've ever played that game. I, just wasn't one have, we had. You had to have played it at my place at some point, but I know. don't remember. I, I like I can picture the game, yeah. like I've seen it, but I don't remember playing it. It's not one of the ones I remember. And then uh, I there's probably the other one is, and I can never remember the name of it. I'll have to. I'd have to go digging. Uh, do you remember the the game I had? It had the wizards and the toads, and the you were trying to save a, a princess from the dragon. And it's tokens with uh, wizards and toads and ogres. Uh, and it's this old Vaguely. 70s magic game. And we ended up hacking it and rewriting the magic system at one point. Because the game itself was kind of meh. But it was the, the pieces were really interesting. Right. 
Nah, off the top of my head, like it sounds vaguely familiar, but I think I think I wiped too many of my childhood <laughs> memories, even gaming related. Uh, uh, what else we got? Um, coming up next, uh, we're gonna dig back in here. So, games for music has a question. What is the most important game that results with new music being played? I gotta say, I, I that is the most fascinating question I think we've ever <laughs> been asked. And I am hoping we got a bunch of people hanging out in the lobby that may be able to help us out here because I can honestly only think of one. And it's one I haven't played. So again, I'm doing the bad thing where I'm going off other people's opinions on a game. It's one I've been really tempted to pick up. And I am even drawing a blank on the stupid name of it right now. It was Hasbro Drop Mix. That is the name of the mm. game. So Drop Mix. And it's this, I, it's a big plastic thing that you connect to your phone or an app or a, or a tablet or whatever. And you have these cards that had whatever chips in them or whatever. And it came with a bunch of different cards and they were all popular songs. Like I, you had uh, whatever Britney Spears song, and you'd have uh, some other. I don't know. They were all family friendly songs. So there were there were no nasty lyrics in any of these. Actually, to be honest, here's how little I know. But I don't know if anything had lyrics. I think it was just the music. I'm pretty sure it was just like like the beat from a, a popular song. And then you could buy expansion packs, and there were tons of them. Like you could get soul, you could get jazz, you could get pop hits, euro hits, and all these things. And the game system came with a total a ton of different games you could play. And from what I understand, it was most fun just goof around with it. But there were games where you like you'd have a hand of cards and you try to play all your cards. And what would happen is you would put one card on the thing and it would play that beat right that that part of the song but then you would grab another song from a different artist and put it and you'd be trying to make music and it would create new songs because it would be a mashup of what you have out there and it was all about trying to like i said i know at least one of the games was play your hand so you would play a card and then everyone at the table would vote if the song got better or worse which actually sounded really neat so like you'd be like all right you got the and then someone else puts down a you're like, oh, that sounds cool. Okay, you get to keep play, play your card. And then it goes to the next person, and they play a card down. And then there was something about the position they were in mattered too. So I don't know if that was different parts of the songs or what. Um, and when they would get played, you'd be like, oh, no, no, that sounds worse. You'd have to take your card back. But like, there was a, at least five different ways to play, if not more, included in the box. So Drop Mix is the most uh, important was the question, but I would think that the most groundbreaking, like this was mass market. You could get this at Target, Walmart, uh, at Toys R Us at the, day, at the end of the day. And this literally generated new music as you played the game. What I would love to know, um, I don't see the chat room speaking up, so I don't think they know any, but if anyone out there knows any more, so this is another one I did. I'd love to do it as a full topic, but like I'd be talking about one game for half an hour that I honestly haven't played. Like I'd, I'd have to go out and find a copy of Drop Mix, buy it, so I could try it just to talk about it, and then maybe review Drop Mix. But I can't think of any others. Now I'm thinking there's got to be music-based RPGs out there. There's got to be some kind of improv, sitting around a campfire, past the stick music game. Or something that's like with beatboxing. I just like I just figure someone's gonna have made that. But googling it, like I don't even know how to Google this. <laughs> What's a game that results in new music being created? Like that, it's not gonna get you anywhere. And trust me, I tried. <laughs> I just like maybe I had to deep dive itch, and maybe I'll find something on itch. Yeah, no, that's uh, I I can't say. I mean, I could. I'm sure there are a bunch of uh, music theory type games where you know people who actually know music and notes and, and musical notation things can like, you know, pass around right. cards with notes on, on them and do things like that. But no idea. See, um, that would sound cool too, right? Like if you had a handful of music notes, you put them down and say, like my daughter could play that because she can read music. I have yeah. no clue. I could see that. Maybe that exists. Yeah. I mean, I'm now, sure, I'm sure there's a bunch of different kind of improv games for musicians uh, right. that exist. Um, like, is there a jazz game about making a jazz beat? Like, that's just a Hop Cat Jive Club or something? That's the name of a game. So, Axon Punk is one that um, Red Meeple Ryan brings up in the chat. It is an expanded hip hop infused cyberpunk TTRPG. <laughs> I'm looking to see how much. Uh, 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 so far, it sounds really neat. Fellow city dwellers produce missions, get rewards. 
Players Week will evolve. Over. I don't see anything that says anything about actually making kick pop, except for yeah, I don't, I don't see, I don't see any mechanisms in the game for for making or creating hip hop. I mean, maybe it's in there, but I'm just scrolling quick. Your other option is if you're more of a musical theater type buff and you've got someone around who can play a piano, whose line is it anyway? Has some great inspiration for creating new songs, right? Oh, throw there down, you go. Throw yeah. down a background melody and randomly improv a song based on something someone you know pulls out of a hat or whatever. Um, Fair. There's you know whose line is it anyway? Has done some wonders for improv musical singing type. There stuff. you go. Yeah, if anyone out there has any, hit us up. Mo at tabletopbellhop.com. Let, let me know. Let me know if you can find a, a game that generates new music because the concept then of it sounds really awesome. Rap Gods doesn't have any actual rap in it, right? It's a worker placement game. As far as mainly. I know, yeah. Yeah, like it doesn't really have that create new music aspect. Right. So, All right, I think I saw some new stuff from the chat. What do we got? I got a question here from Jeff. Uh what is a game that you know it is going to hit the table for a lot of others when the world opens, but that you are not looking forward to? Oh, it's like backwards. <laughs> Popular game that everyone's going to be talking about and everyone's going to be all wild to play, but it just isn't your thing. Uh, well, I, I think people have finally moved past Scythe. <laughs> um, I, I think, like, I, I want to say Everdell, but it's not because it's not my thing. It's just because I didn't want to spend 360 Canadian to go all in. So Everdell is one that a bunch of people are going to be playing, but I don't know how soon that's going to deliver. But right. I don't know when we're going to end lockdown, so I may as well assume it's yeah. going <laughs> to deliver before we end lockdown at this point. So Everdell's one, but that, just because of the price, not because I don't want to play the game. It's, it's I did not, I, I, the way the new Kickstarter was, yes, I could have just got the base game, but I would have wanted to get everything if I was going to do it at all. So that's one. I would love to play. Uh, I, I, I think there's going to be a lot of people playing Everdell getting delivered. Um, there's uh, the, the big one that everyone's going nights right now for is a Stonemire game, Red something. And I know nothing about that. So again, this is just a point of me not being informed on what the game's about. So I don't care, but everyone seems to be going nuts for Red that. Red Rising? Red Rising, that's it. So yeah, Red Rising. That's um, hand the, management combo building game based on the futuristic dystopian novels by Pierce Brown. Oh, there you go. See, it's based on a popular license. Okay, that makes more sense why there's so much buzz. Yeah. But it's just, I don't know anything about it. So, eh. I don't, I don't really care either way. So I guess this was a, sorry, a follow-up. We, we missed yeah, the first no, part I, of the we, question. We, we did. We missed the original. Well, let's finish this one. We'll yeah. finish this. We'll finish the, the, the second part of the question. So uh, another one is Tainted Grail. Tainted Grail, I know insider info possibly, just showed up at distributors. And local game stores can order it and get it in as of right now. It is looking at $240 Canadian to get this game in. Um, that is from one of our local game stores, uh, Tabletop Renaissance, Soul and Store. Feel free to check it out, Google it if you want. Uh, as far as I know, they might even ship other places than in Windsor. And I don't know how that price compares to anyone else. I just know the price that they will be selling it at. That's not, that's not their price, it's the price you would pay. And that was meant to be the Gloomhaven killer, according to everyone who backed it on Kickstarter. And I am really curious to see how well that pans out. But again, $240. Canadian for one game. Yeah. Like, like, I don't care if it's bigger than Gloomhaven. I can play it for three years. I still have Gloomhaven and I haven't finished it after playing for two years. And that only cost me under 90 bucks. Yeah. So it, it's just too big. Plus, it looks to be too big. It looks like it's trying to do too much at once. Uh, it's the problem that, that that Kickstarter you were looking at that you almost backed. It looks like it has similar problems. It's trying to be too big of adventure, too big of a game. So, so that's another one that I think yeah. people are going to be playing, but I won't be part of. Um, uh, Armada, Star Wars Armada, they just dropped a, like a new, not a new edition, but their Atomic Mass is finally putting out their version and their updates and their, their versions of the ships. And that's a game where I didn't play my original copy enough times, so I don't think I'm going to get into it. But I don't think that's going to be one everyone's going to be playing. Right. Talk I got to say, welcome back to the chat, Shadzar. It has been a long time. It's been quite a while. Uh, they're having a chat about uh, the uh, versions purchased of Hero Quest. 
Uh, oh yeah, I went all in on that. I, I will be playing Hero Quest <laughs> along with everyone else. Yeah. Whenever that shows up, I will be playing that, and I'll be showing it off at the local stores if I if I can get out there. So yeah, I will definitely be playing that one. Yeah, it'll be interesting. And you know, like there's some of the Simon stuff where it's like, yeah, it's, yeah, it's interesting. That's that stuff where I, I again, most of those games I'd happily play once, but I wouldn't ship. I wouldn't shell out the money to play them. You know, over and over and over again because yeah. they just I don't feel like they have that much into them um uh other games that i'm trying to think of uh the chat's flooding in yep. welcome everyone hey folks and thanks to uh again to everyone who's uh saying hi to hi. So, uh, hi and happy birthday i appreciate it um talking you were talking about price and i was reminded about the uh the cost to ship the uh oh yes <laughs> uh, shopify has a standard um, shipping system that's the, that's a plug-in to their to their Shopify thing, and it's it's USPS UPS um, pricing, and it's something it, it appears to just take the raw weight of a parcel from your your SKU mm -hmm. and slap it into a formula, and a deck builder we were recommending to someone came out to between 56 or a hundred dollars to ship yeah. just a tiny little deck builder it's not a big game at all but yeah so shopify work on your work on your shipping rates uh but anyway so a follow-up or the the original yeah, question the original. to jeff's uh what game are you not looking forward to everyone playing is what is the first game you want to get to the table at a public play event when the world reopens Oh, there we go. See, that was the question I was expecting when you said the other one. Oh, man, that's rough. A public play, I think I'm going to go with potentially our review for later today, Reef or Space Space. I think one of them, they're both easily accessible games. They're light. They're they're family friendly. They're, they're a public play game, especially Reef for its, its physicality. That's a game I'm going to set up on the table at, uh, at uh, CG Realm or maybe at uh, Easy Mode or somewhere local. Maybe we'll be back at coffee shops and people are going to come over and go, what's that? And then I'm going to say, no, just sit down and play. It's simple. I can teach you in five minutes. Let's go. And then second will be Space Base because it's it's another, it's a step up, right? It's it's definitely not as light, but it's still pretty accessible. Basic mechanics are roll 2d6 and get something. Then use that, what you got to buy more cards. Every turn, you're getting a new card in that game. So unlike Valeria and other um dice driven resource generation games every round you are swapping a ship every time every time though i gotta admit later in the game there are reasons not to if you have very little money but in general it's it's a great engine builder and it shows up that off well those are probably the two games that i got most recently that i'm excited to show off to the public next up actually you know what no space space push it one this goes first fun fair so simple and quick but feel so deep so Funfair, that might that jumps to second. So Reef and Funfair, depending on how experienced the gamers are to sit at my table, the first game we play when we go to a local game store. So I'm going to sit down and depending on who sits with me, if it's someone who's like used to playing Terraforming Mars with me and stuff, we're breaking out Funfair. If it's someone that's like, oh, this is my first time coming out to a gaming event, what, what do you got? Then I'm going to break out Reef. And then the next, maybe we'll play Space Base or we'll swap to the other game. That, that's, my, that's my thoughts. Uh, my two, uh, depending on when they show up, uh, I've got, I was just looking at my backer list to, to see what, <laughs> what I'm expecting. And um, Studies in Sorcery is one that I'm really looking forward to. And that's uh, uh, sort of a, a take on Harry, a Harry Potter concept uh, deck builder type card game that's interesting. And then I did go all in for the Hoop Gods with Rap Gods second printing. Uh, and I'm looking to see how that okay. one, how that one goes, and I think that one will actually look good out on a public play table as well. So that'll probably come down to uh, no. Windsor with me at some point. All right, I'm going to twist the question a bit, and I'll ask you first, and then maybe I'll answer separate, or maybe I'll just ask you: If you could make it down to Windsor, what's the game we should play first? Oh God, <laughs> that is always such a brutal question. Uh, probably Eclipse. Okay. I'll have to remember that. Yeah. that that's a big I mean, one. Yeah, no, but exactly. Getting to play that with more than that's two. one of those things that we don't do. We don't tend to do big ones yeah. uh, because we want to get so many games in. Uh, yeah. And so we, we have in, we generally avoided most of the epic, you know, let's sit down and play this game for six hours or four hours or however many right. hours because 
wouldn't it be more fun to play these six games <laughs> um, and sleep? But <laughs> fair enough. All right. So the one I want to play with you the most is Aventuria, but that's self-serving. It's, it's one we have to review. You read the yep. rules. Yep. I want to play that with at least three people. Aventuria for Pile of Obligation and Space Base for, oh my God, it's so good. You have to try this. Right. And again, so those two. I read the, I read, yeah. I read the, the rules for Space Base and we just never got, we didn't fit it, it in. Yep. We didn't fit in. We convinced you to play a word gaze puzzle game instead, which worked out really well. All uh, right. The chat's flooding with questions now. Absolutely. So I've got uh, here, we're going to go off topic because we don't, we don't, we don't do topics on our AMA. So from Matt yes. FKG off topic AMA question, what is the favorite Windsor pizza? <sighs> There's so many good ones. <laughs> um, the, in general, if, if, if money is not an option in general, it's, it's a toss up depending on who's been better lately, to be honest. Um, if, if it still exists, it would be in person Capri pizza on Google road. The problem is they closed the restaurant part and this had nothing to do with COVID before COVID hit, they decided the restaurant portion wasn't doing well enough and that they were going to do takeout and delivery only. That was the best pizza in the city, in my opinion. And I share pictures of it. They even did this thing where they braided the crust a bit. Like it was fantastic. Now delivery Capri is usually good, but every now and then it's not. And we're getting it from Forest Clay because that's the closest one to our place. So, yeah. so I, I want to say Capri, but it, uh, I want old Capri. I don't want my 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 Forest Clay Capri. I want the Dougal Pizza Capri, which I can won't deliver to our house because it's too far away. Second, though, and more consistent for pizza, no, only for pizza, based on some of my current uh, social media feeds, is Windsor Pizza itself on Jefferson. They are consistently fantastic for the pizza, best toppings. They have the best sausage. That's that small, bald, fennelly, uh, bald? Yeah, bald is in like rolled into a ball. Ball like fennelly sausage is amazing. When you ask for extra cheese, you actually get extra cheese. They slice the pepperoni perfect. They even make pizzas that Deanna likes with all kinds of toppings. I don't want on my pizza. My mom loves Windsor pizza. I would recommend them for other things, but I unfortunately can't do that right now and i don't know if it's new management or what but the pizza has still been stand up so those those are my two favorite windsor style pizza pizzas but there are other options right uh here in windsor you can also get wood fire pizza and wood fire pizza i love oven 360 it's fast food pizza it's like going to subway you walk in you pick a crust size you pick it if you want whole wheat or white or gluten-free and then you literally like like subway look at all the toppings go i want some of that and some of that and some of that and you can get different sauces and you could get um uh whatever you, you do like an arabiata or you can do like uh just oil and garlic or you can do the alfredo and then they put it in this special oven and this is why it's called oven 360 where your pizza goes around the inside of the oven 360 degrees and when it gets the other side it's perfectly cooked and they have like a whole bunch going they said it's like fast food so i play amazing but it's not windsor style at all it is a completely different when i go there i'm getting um capicolo and and prosciutto on my pizza i'm not getting you know double cheese pepperoni italian sausage so that's my favorite place for that um downtown there's terracotta pizza if you want gourmet uh hand tossed wood fire amazing food um deep dish then you go to armando's and you have to hit the one on Cabana Road or the new one in Amherstburg. And you get Dean Lister, the pizza king, to make you a deep dish pizza. It's Detroit-style deep dish, or they have Windsor-style deep dish. But the Detroit-style deep dish Roni Rubber is one of the best pizzas I've ever had in my mouth. I love it. But again, it's not Windsor-style. So, like, there's so many options. What I generally avoid is the, the pizza pizzas, the Domino's, of course. But a lot of the, the Pizza Plus, the, the cheaper pizzas where you can get a large pizza for 10 bucks, those I usually don't like. Um, I like Antonino's, but Antonino's is a lot spicier sauce. And they do the thing where you get the cornmeal on the bottom of the crust. And I actually don't like the texture of that, but I love their toppings. Like, I just yeah, wish I, I they... Do, I do love it. I do love a good cornmeal on the... Uh... Yeah, see, some people love it. So, so they're up there, but I personally think Windsor Pizza is better. Yeah, we got we got a, a ton of different. <laughs> I'm a, you know types. I'm a big fan of Capri. Um, it's it's hard to go wrong with Capri, and I I when I'm uh, I I will on occasion if I'm visiting my my grandfather in Lakeshore, there's the Capri in the plaza right on Manning and uh, Manning Road there, and I'll and I'll swing by yep. and grab one to go for the drive home. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Capri's consistent. 
Yeah. Usually, it's, it's just yeah. oh, the one the one on Dougal where you ate in was always so good. Yeah. Plus, then you got to eat in, and you could get like my mom could get a, a, a chicken parm, and uh, someone else would get a lasagna or whatever the kids would get, whatever they wanted, and that it was better for that. But unfortunately, that's no longer an option. Is I doubt it'll ever come back at this point. Uh, how, how is Sarducci? I, maybe you missed it. I was uh, Sarducci. Uh, Sarducci's it... to me is still on that cheaper end, right? Okay. It's the cheaper pizza that really good for the price, but it's not my favorite pizza. What I used to love from Sarducci's is they had a deal where you got two mediums with six toppings and you could pick and mix and match. So I would just get like mine with pepperoni and cheese and then Dee would be able to get five toppings on her medium, right? which worked out really well. And that's what we've done all the game nights you came down for, like when we do New Year's or whatever. And that way I, I, we pair up. So every group of two people would get would get a pizza to split and it was dirt cheap well not dirt cheap but it was it was very reasonably priced they use pretty good toppings i just i find their crust isn't as good and their sauce is just like i, I feel like they're using a canned sauce which they may or may not be yeah I don't know. it's just not as nice as some of the other ones we my but family okay. had I'd gotten in the habit years ago now but uh i had gotten in the habit of the uh, serducci's kitchen sink pizza which yeah. was like the whole tomato like you know the whole tomato slices and everything on it uh and that was a that was a big go-to that's i mean that's the topping style of there there because starts drifting away from the official Windsor style when you start doing yes. the kitchen sink, but uh, always uh, always solid pizza there. Uh, and my dad knew knew the owner, so I think we got this. right. <laughs> um, so we we did it for years until they left, got rid of that deal, and then it became right. just as pricey as ordering Windsor pizza, and then I'd rather have Windsor pizza. Well, and it's one of those things where you know they, they've changed over time. You know, Sam's used to be the, the oh Windsor, Sam's the best place pizza in Windsor. Serducci's yeah. was fantastic pizza in Windsor, but yeah. over the time the uh, Sam's the owners is, have is changed definitely, and things. Yeah. Sam's is definitely new owners with a new, different flavor. Yeah. And we, we have had some bad experiences there, so we don't even try. Yeah. But Sam's, man, when they looked like an Italian restaurant with the white and red oh, uh, yeah. checkered tablecloths yeah, yeah, yeah. and like the, when, we, when the Ingrata family was owning it. When you walked yeah, yeah. in, the Ingrata family owned yeah. it. Yeah. That, that Sam's was the best at one time. They had the best panzos too. Oh, yeah, they I mean, deliver them like really early in the morning sometimes <laughs> too. I remember getting 3 a.m. panzos. And I just, I just happened to live like down the street from yeah. Sam's. So that was, that was where we went to. I mean, that's what I knew pizza wow. of pizza was. I mean, I remember the first time when I had like pizza, pizza, garbage yeah. pizza. And, and you're like, like what is this? <laughs> yeah. What is this? Oh. All right. Uh, we are at AMA, so we talked a bit about pizza. Let's absolutely. get. We, we got, no we got some other questions. I, the chat is there's going by a, so quick, I can't read it. There's been a lot of so Haven awesome. and Frost Haven chat. Uh, a lot of people were kept going on about Hero Quest. Uh, Ryan had asked me about Hoop Gods, and I'm like, yes. So Hoop Gods and Rap Gods should be delivering at the same time for me. I got in who nice. with Hoop Gods and the second printing of Rap Gods in one package. Um, yeah the talk about hero quest is yeah we played through the original that was a game that uh, i played with deanna when we were dating we played through that uh good night jeff uh had not yeah, good night, jeff. um uh, josh lion entry excellent onboarding the best yes. way to learn gloom, any gloomhaven if you're yeah. playing any gloomhaven start with jaws of the lion yeah, Jaws of the Lion, definitely. If you're getting into Gloomhaven now, start there. Even Frosthaven. Play it before you play Frosthaven. Yeah. Jaws of the Lion is fantastic. Standalone game. Very well done. Great onboarding while still being quite difficult. Like, it it definitely ramps up. Uh, Gloomhaven, people have to realize, Gloomhaven is not Hero Quest. It is, it's, they're in totally different categories. It's, it's, it's almost like two different approaches to the same thing, right? You're both a dungeon crawl. But like one is a one versus many where someone's playing the the, the dungeon master, except they're not because they're trying to win. So you have someone playing the monsters versus playing the characters. And it's super light, like you can all move the exact number of squares and you're just rolling a bunch of dice looking for hit symbols and highly random. And you're rolling on random tables and maybe getting some spells that, that, that fix the rules a little bit or, or change the rules a little bit. Whereas Gloomhaven is actually a very heavy puzzle game that's all about optimizing your turn and managing your hand. And it, it's a completely different feel. Like, like, yes, you're both exploring a dungeon, but one's solving a puzzle where the other is having an adventure. Uh, it literally is that the scale of Euro to Ameritrash, if such a thing still exists. And we talked about before how nowadays everything's so mashed, it doesn't really matter. But Hero Quest is very much on the Ameritrash side and Gloomhaven is very much on the Euro side of things. Uh, so we got a question from Shadzar. Again, great to see you back in the chat. Uh, what about those retro crossover games like TMNT and Ghostbusters as a board game? 
I, to be honest, I'm not sure exactly which ones because there's so many different versions out there. <laughs> um, the Ghostbusters game I have was another one of those big Kickstarter. It might have been cool mini or not. It might not have. I can't remember off the top of my head. There was tons of miniatures and there were all these stretch goals to unlock more miniatures and you could get additional chapters and you could unlock the Exo, ex, uh, the Ecto-1 miniature and they put out a, an expansion with, um, uh, I can't even remember, the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man was the one bad guy, but it came up with, there was another bad guy you could get. Um, and it was okay. I, it was cooperative game where you play the Ghostbusters against the others. And like I said, I think it's the same people who did Zombicide. And I think you can see the Zombicide roots in it. And we had some fun with it, but it was it was okay. Deanna liked it way more than I did. She actually really got into it, thought it felt really good. And I just, I, I kept it because she liked it more than anything. So it was okay. But I doubt that's the one he's talking about. So apparently there's a Ghostbusters uh, versus Men in Black Ecto Terrestrial Invasion crossover yeah. game. That's one I haven't, uh, I haven't run across. Yeah, I don't know that one. So sorry, I cannot uh, talk to that because I've never heard of it. Um, then the, the the TMNT miniature game, which is another one that was I, this one was IDW. So is this one actually? Okay, so the, the original was IDW, the Ghost, but uh, the TMNT one, and there wasn't enough in the base box. Again, it was a big Kickstarter with all these expansions. You could get you could get April O'Neil and you could get Splinter and you could get additional chapters and everything. And I didn't. All I did was buy the retail version when it came out, and I was highly disappointed because the scenarios were just lame like your first scenario was you're in this alley and you fight a bunch of foot soldiers and then a lieutenant comes out and then the next one is you're like in a warehouse and you fight more and then the next one you're in a bigger warehouse and eventually like I, bebop or rocksteady or someone shows up and that was it there was like four chapters maybe it was six but like you could play through that in an afternoon so i was like what that was like, there's just not enough in that base box. Now, what that game did do is that had a fantastic co-op rule where you had a pool of dice and you would roll them. And there would be things like skateboards to move and nunchucks to hit. And I, I don't remember all the different symbols on them. Shells to defend or something like that. And you would line your dice up in front of you in a row. And the die on the far right and the die on the far left, you shared with the other players. So if I put a hit in my far right, the person to my right could use my hit. And whatever they put in their far left, I could use. And I thought that was a brilliant way to add a cooperative element to a miniature game. But I think for that game to go anywhere, they needed to make more. They needed to keep going with it. So regarding the Ghostbusters versus Men in Black Echo, Ecto, ter, Ecto Terrestrial Invasion IW game, just taking a quick little look at it. Uh, my first, the first strike against it for me personally is Chibi Miniatures. It's just not a style I enjoy, especially when they're recreating characters from my past that I have a fondness for in that style. Uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's a fine style for original art, but I don't like seeing my, my favorite characters recreated that way. Yeah. Um, now, they do have an interesting um, mechanic in this game. The firehouse has been recreated into a system not all un, uh, not all that unlike a dice tower cross of um the um, cube tower from wallenstein no um no. the um but the marble drop from uh, oh tower of madness tower of Kukunk? madness so it is dice inside of it and so but as you pull things out of the the towers a certain number of dice come down and roll to determine what goes out onto the map so it's an interesting little mechanic that they've put together for that. And it's a nice looking piece, but you combine that with the chibi and I, I don't know. It, I don't know if it has a lot of, it's, it's probably got a lot of table presence for a public right. event, but replayability eh, does again, doesn't really do anything for me uh, when you add up some of the. My guess aspects. is it's probably based on a comic book because most of the IDW stuff is because they are a comic book publisher as well, but I don't know. Well, they get all the license to licenses to like everything. Oh yeah. Everything. It um, is. It is. And I, I'm sorry to say this, but most of the IDW games aren't that great in my experience. The ones I have played have not so been great. Aiming to look, capture the look and feel of a Saturday morning cartoon. But I, I guess that's new Saturday morning cartoons because none of my Saturday morning yeah, cartoons they're, they're, were chibi. Yeah. Um, all right, so the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game, uh, Ryan is saying it's Cryptozoic. No, it's IDW games. I was right. So Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shadows of the Past is the one I played. That is IDW games. Um, and what was the other one I mentioned before? What did we talk about before TMNT? 
Ghostbusters? Ghostbusters, yeah. Wow. <laughs> Shot a blank. 2015? Yeah, 2015. Yeah, I, th- I think a lot of these... these that verses. one's Cryptozoic. Yeah, okay. so Ghostbusters is Cryptozoic. And it looks like a cool mini game. I got to say, it really does. Um, so that one was Cryptozoic and the Team MT was... So they're not from the same people at all. I, I have to say, I'll, you know... People are starting to get a little greedy. And, and this Ghostbusters Men in Black Yecto Terrestrial Invasion is, look, Sony's got a bunch of licenses and they want to get them out on the market. They don't mm. want to necessarily make a Ghostbusters game, but if they make a Ghostbusters and Men in Black game, they can double their market. Uh, you know, they're going to get all those hardcore board, board gaming fans from both those. Uh, That's what they're hoping. People, yes. They're hoping anyway. So, you know, it's it's a smart move. Again, the hardcore fans will probably love it and buy in, but your average gamer, whether or not they're going to go for that, is is really dependent mm-hmm. on how much the style that they've decided to go with really catches your attention and 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 moves you. To me, for me, mm-hmm. it's not uh, not something that's going to do it. All righty, I think we got time for one more. If I don't see something from the chat, we'll pick. I think this one from our backlog. Because right. we kind of talked about this yeah, a little yeah. bit, but I think it's a little bit more specific. Or we could throw this on, but this this I think it didn't take too long. Yeah, no, I think so. I, I think that yep. one. All right, so All we're, right. we're 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 no. giving you a chance in the chat though. Feel free to ask something. We'll, we'll do yours instead. That's what we're here for tonight. Yeah. Um. Again, awesome to see so many people in the chat, including some new people. That's it. Awesome. And some old. I, I don't want to <laughs> say old timer because I don't mean it that way. But <laughs> people we haven't seen in a while, and are yes, happy coming back to have back so yeah there are a couple other standalone tmnt games that use that system so that's cool because that is the system was awesome but like we played that tmnt shadows of the past at brimstone games and literally played the whole campaign and i'm like i don't feel like fighting this again to see if i could do better like it just didn't have that play it multiple times kind of thing i i got rid of it or i'm going to get rid of it i can't remember (laughs) which right now it's one of the two. It's it's either on the pile to get rid of, or I already got rid of it. I don't remember which. I don't see it on the pile that's in this room right. to get rid of. All right. Well, we're going to finish up with this question from Bryce Henderson, okay. who asks, what Kickstarters are you most looking forward to its fulfillment? All right. I'm going to broaden it, say which crowdfunded, just in case. <laughs> Because because part of me wants to say Hero Quest, but to be honest, it's not Hero. Uh, it's, uh, you know what it is. If we're gonna stay in lockdown for much longer, it's Hero Quest. Right. I want Hero Quest because I want to play that with my girls. I want to play it with Deanna again and experience it again. I'm gonna be really tempted to start painting again when it shows up. I'm gonna want to steal the scenery from it and use it in our Gloomhaven game. So I am really looking forward to Hero Quest. But that's only if we're stuck at home. If we can get out and I can actually get other people here, I really want to play Worldwide Wrestling Second Edition. I, I am itching to run a role-playing game. Uh, if I had to do non-Kickstarters, it's one of the other ones I've reviewed in the last couple of years that we haven't gotten to play. But I really want to play Worldwide Wrestling. I particularly like to play it at a con. I would love to go to Breakout and play some Worldwide Wrestling or start a game locally. I've had a couple people definitely say they really want to play it locally. And I like maybe we do this on, on, on Zoom or something. I don't know. But there's a lot of physicality to the new edition that I think is going to not work as well online. But we'll see. So Worldwide Wrestling 2nd Edition from Nathan D. Paoletta uh, would be my number one Kickstarter I'm looking forward to getting as long as I can actually play it with someone. <laughs> Whereas Hero Quest would be the number one crowdfunded game I want to show up now so I could start playing it with my girls and with Deanna. So yeah, I, I am waiting most patiently. Uh, you already said Worldwide Wrestling, so I'm not going to say that because yeah. I'm waiting for that as well. Uh, that should be That is shipping, actually. Um, oh, see, I didn't. I didn't notice the reason. I, I believe cool. he. I believe that is in in shipping right now. So we should be seeing that. Uh, my next one is is kind of a hesitant. I'm, I'm I'm eager to see it, but I'm also hesitant. And that is Galaxies in Peril, which mm. is the forged in the dark superhero uh, version of Worlds in Peril. Uh, and Worlds in Peril, as we discussed on our previous episode about supers, uh, had some good potential, but also had some real drawbacks to it. So yeah. I just kind of, I, I really, I'm really hoping this Galaxy in Peril um, knocks it out of the park and, and turns into the solid supers game that I want it to be. Um, whereas I think Hoop Gods and Rap Gods are something that I will actually play with my kids. So mm-hmm. when those show up, I can get those to the table uh, right away. Unlike, 
unlike uh, Galaxy in Peril. So why is it called Galaxy in Peril? Like, to me, that sounds sci-fi. It's not they, super well, it, they've they've expanded it, so it, it's it's not just the city. It's not local heroes. It's it's more. They, they've opened it up to a more. So it's like potentially that cosmic, cosmic potentially cosmic. They've allowed. Uh, they've apparently allowed it for more cosmic threats and not just you know stuck in the city because masks is is generally a very oh, yeah. city based yes. uh, thing. You're not you're not going. Uh, yeah, you you are street level world. heroes. Well, you're, you're high school level yeah. heroes. Um, and I mean, you may be powerful, but you're not. You're not powerful and known enough to be going helping in other countries. Whereas Galaxy in Peril, you're supposed to be playing a super team. You're 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 JLA level sort of right. kind of stuff. All right, that makes sense. I just I, I got to say the branding's off. Like if <laughs> I see that, I think I don't think Guardians of the Galaxy I, or or Green Lantern. I think Star Wars. Yeah, right, no, I, the galaxy's under attack. I need <laughs> to defend it and defeat the evil empire. Like yeah. that, that's what that brings to mind for me. That's like of all all games, the one that totally confused me. A scum and villainy. <laughs> like, I totally get that's a Star Wars reference, and I yep. should recognize that as a Star Wars reference, but I thought it was a game about playing rogues and thieves. <laughs> like, I, I literally thought it was like like a, yep. a heist game, like a, 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 a bad guy heist, not not a, you know, you're heisting for the good reasons, but I actually thought it was like pickpockets and, and thieves guilds and doing all this stuff, and then someone's like, blah, 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 the sci-fi is Star Wars based. I'm like, Star Wars based? What the heck? Why is it Star Wars based? Yeah. And then someone's a den of scum and villainy, the most a wretched hive of scum and villainy. <laughs> and I'm like, oh wow. <laughs> like it just whew, right over my head. Yeah. I totally missed that. And then, then once I learned more about the game, I'm like, I want to try that game. But that definitely was branded and I, I guess that was smartly branded. I guess it makes sense to most people, but I totally missed it completely. I'm like, scum and villainy. This is like, you know, Thardon's Thieves Guild and Warhammer <laughs> is what you're gonna be playing out, not not an intergalactic right. uh space uh renegades or whatever you want to call <laughs> all right. righty i think that's about all we're gonna get to tonight um we've been doing this for a long enough time i think so thank you very much everyone in the chat room for your questions it's been a great lobby tonight thank you to all the lobbyists who joined us tonight remember if you've got a game or game night question for us you don't have to wait for an ama head over to the website click on ask the bellhop or fire off an email to questions at tabletopbellhop.com 